Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here with the C47 and another episode of, well, the first episode of doing three episodes a week, which is a little bit insane. Um, we're going to talk about something that showed up in this little brown box over the weekend. Uh, a friend of mine, Eric Naso, actually did an episode on this last week, I believe, and then I got a package and there it was. So this is the Aperture um, Lightstorm 120T, T for tungsten, tungsten color temperature, 3200 Kelvin. Uh, it's an LED fixture, and if I just take this off, which I'm going to be talking to you about in a minute, you can see that it is an LED array. Oh, you can't really see that because there's phosphor in front of it. Uh, but there's an LED array behind here, and it acts like a single light source. And it's a little bit harder than what we would get with certain types of LEDs, um, especially when we talk about technology like remote phosphor and other lights like the Celeb light, uh, which has a panel in front of it, the same with the select lights, and a whole bunch of other stuff, the sky panel lights from um, Ari. Reflector, uh, this will basically just take that very broad beam and it will bring it in a little bit. It's also going to intensify the light a little bit and give it a little bit more of a harder edge. Um, in fact, let me just pan this over here. And one of the reasons that I really like this light, by the way, is it's very lightweight in terms of the head, has good output overall, uh, has a separate controller, which a lot of people would be bothered by, but it hangs right onto your light stand. And I like it because I can just throw a V-mount lock battery. Um, this is the Hypercore uh, 150, which is a, a beast of a, of a battery, which I really like. So uh, turn this thing on. We take a look at it and make sure it's all the way up. And you can see that it has a very, very broad uh, beam. It's got a nice fall off in general. If I put that reflector on here, let's just go ahead and do that you can see that it becomes uh, a little bit narrower and has a little bit more of a hard cut. And then the other modifier that I use a lot with this particular light is this beast right here, the light dome. Uh, it's awesome. And I've used it as a key here. I've used it as a key over here. Uh, in fact, recently, Last, was it even? <laughs> I can't even believe it was last week. Was it last week? Well, it was right before Christmas. I shot uh, four commercials in two days, dp I didn't actually produce those. I worked for uh, friends who have a production company. And we used that light dome with this fixture as the key for one of the scenes. So uh, needless to say, I like the light. I wish I had the uh, daylight version of it, which they do now make. And uh, let's check out this Fresnel mount. It's a composite plastic overall, a little bit of metal in here as well. And a Fresnel lens has these concentric circles. Um, they create very, very nice fall off, a nice even light. In fact, on lights like the Jokerbug 400 and the 800, I very oftentimes will drop the Fresnel lens in immediately onto a light like that and I really like the result. So let's see what happens when we put it onto and line up these arrows and we put it right onto the 120T and we just lock it in and there it is. And let me actually dial this light down just a little bit just so that I can pan it over here and show you some things. So on this side there's a little indicator um, and then on this side there's a knob that you can tighten or loosen. And if I loosen that knob and I go look over here, I can change the beam angle from 12 to 42 degrees with this particular light. So there it is at a 12 degree angle. And then as I move it back, we start to increase the spread there. And there we have it at 42 degrees. Uh, and you'll see that as I pan the light, it has a very, very nice even fall off um, I can bring the intensity of the light up again now so you can see that. And for me, Fresnel lenses um, are just really, really great to use. And of course, this is more directional. Um, 
inside the box, there are also illustrations for uh, a grid, a little honeycomb grid, and also barn doors because there are uh, basically attachment points here for you to attach those as separate accessories. So I'm hoping to get to check those out at some point as well. Um, one thing to note here, as I just tilt this up and I'll increase the light so you can see this, there are uh, essentially vents here which are used, I'm sure, for cooling for the light. And when you see me look down there, I'm just looking at a monitor just for reference to make sure you can see uh, what I want you to see. And you'll see that that light leaks a little bit. So I would recommend that you take some um, black wrap with you and just leave it with the light. That way you can cover it and do that temporarily. You can kind of gnarl it around that little knob if you want once you've tightened it down and you can handle that little light spill pretty easily. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I'll give you a link to one or two videos that I featured this light with modifiers um, in. One of the very early ones when I started up the new stuff. Uh, but that was outside with a tungsten with a CTB. Uh, so having the daylight would definitely help in terms of output and everything else. And when you put a Fresnel lens on, it's you know sort of intensifying that beam as well. Uh, in fact, that said, I'll send you to Eric's video on the Fresnel so you can get some more information on it. He did some tests. Um, it's good to share. Sharing is good. And now I have to think about a video to shoot for Wednesday this week. So I'll see you guys next time.